Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another NHL first round playoff preview. We're going to be looking at the Edmonton Oilers and the Los Angeles Kings. And I've got two writers from the Hockey Raiders here with us. And Nick Vasquez, who covers the LA Kings, and then Colton Pankey, who often covers the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Nick, how are you doing today? Doing all right. How about yourself? Really, really good. I'm looking forward to this series because it's a rematch from last year where the Oilers uh, kind of narrowly skate by the LA Kings. And so we're going to get uh, another look at that. And of course, Colton's with us as well, who uh, knows the Oilers quite well. Colton, how are you? Good, Jim. Excited to finally be doing this. It feels like we've kind of just been waiting the last few weeks for this to start. So excited to get going. Yeah, we finally, we're almost there where I think, do we have every bracket ready though? I don't know if we have every uh, single one, but I think we do, don't we? At this I point, think we, we, do, we yeah. finally know who's playing who. And yeah. We've kind of had a feeling that the Oilers would be playing the Kings for a little while here. There was a chance going into this that if, the Vegas Golden Knights didn't win their game and the Oilers did win theirs and they were on a huge roll going into the, end of the season that it could flip. But we really kind of had this feeling that it was going to be Edmonton and L.A. in a rematch. And I'm looking forward to it because it's two very different teams that are better, I think, than they were last year. I think both the Kings were better than they were last year. I think the Oilers are better than they were last year. And this is two kind of different teams matching up against each other, right? Like this is the Oilers high potent offense versus the LA Kings and their stingier defense and the way that they play they'll grind you down and, and wipe you out that way. Uh, but the Oilers have been on a real tear here. So Colton, I'll come to you first. Um, right now, the matchup against each other, the Oilers and Kings played each other four times. The Oilers won three of these games, 13 goals for 12 goals against. So it's really even in that way. The big difference here, though, is the high potent offense of the stars and the Oilers. McDavid with 153 points, Dry set 128, Nuge 104, Hyman 83. And then you go to the Kings and you've got a really more rounded. Uh, nobody was like hugely up there. I think Kopitar at 74 points was the highest, but there's a lot more scores in that range there on the Kings. So what did you see when you were watching the Oilers versus the Kings or just generally how you felt about the Oilers season now that the regular season is done? Um, so, I mean, just the Oilers season as a whole, I just think that this year, especially it felt like compared to years past when all the knocks was kind of against them, that it was just McDavid and Dreisaitl. They've really kind of proved that wrong this season. Obviously, Nugent Hopkins having over 100 points. Zach Hyman, I think, finished with 83, which is a career high for him. Uh, Evander came when he was in the lineup, 16 goals, and I think about 40 games there. So they can just they have so many guys that can put the puck in the back of the net. Um, as far as what I liked against the Kings though, is that's kind of the other knock against the Oilers is that usually when they win games, it's by having to score five, six goals. And these last two wins against the Kings were very low scoring games. They got a shutout in the one and I think allowed just one in the other. So I think since getting at home, they've really been able to kind of shut things down defensively, which is something that they're not maybe receiving a ton of credit for yet, but I think it speaks a lot about them and just gives me more confidence in that they can not only win this round, but go in a deep playoff run, given how well they're able to play defensively. Yeah, I think you're right. Before the trade deadline, I think the Oilers were viewed as just strictly offense. But now, and I think they are getting credit for it since the arrival of Matias Ekholm and the trade deadline that they can win. And they did. They beat L.A. in L.A. style games at the end of the season here. So that bodes really well for Empton. Nick, what about you? Like, what did you see between these two as you watched the Kings fr from that perspective uh, versus the Oilers? Did you like the way things ended? Did you think they fared pretty well against Edmonton? Because Edmonton's a favorite kind of coming into this, but LA is viewed as a team that could maybe surprisingly knock them off in the first round. What did you see between these two? Yeah, the Kings really tried to play like really structured against the King against the Oilers. Um, they really stuck to the one three one four check. And um, like they did a decent job of slowing the Oilers down. Like I think the most goals they got in a game against them was three. And uh, they also slowed down their power play for the most part until the last game, the Oilers got two power play goals, but uh, they really limited the shots in the last game. And uh, they did a, a good job, like slowing down McDavid. I think he only had like three points against them in the four games. So like they did a decent job. They, what they needed to do better is like, break out of that uh, defensive structure and score actually, which is not the problem they have against most teams this year because they were fairly high scoring, but um, against the Oilers, like, yeah, they really want to match up uh, Philip Deneau's line against McDavid's line. They tried to do that last year. It was working at some, some games, some games it didn't. And um, yeah, they, they, um, I think that Todd McClellan is really familiar with the Oilers, obviously having coached them and he's going to, 
he he has some kind of game plan that might differ from what he does against other teams. But yeah, he really wants to stick to that uh, high structure defensive game. Yeah, I think if there's a team that can potentially, I don't want to say anybody can shut McDavid dry, settle down. I mean, we saw what they did in the playoffs last mm-hmm. year. I mean, they were monsters against everybody. Um, but LA's got that kind of uh, roster where you could limit chances against. Uh, and it's not always goals against, but it's it's the shots. And like you said, it's keeping things to the perimeter, uh, sort of slowing people down who just run away against other teams and really go go hard that way. So I think you're, you're on to something there. Uh, I'm going to stick with you, Nick, and I'm going to ask you about uh, players that you're kind of watching here. Now, I mentioned it kind of off the hop here. Anza Kopitar was leading the Kings with 74 points. Kevin Fiala, before he was injured, he wound up with 72. I don't know at this point what we're to expect from Fiala, if he's going to be in for game one or game two. Uh, Andre uh, Kempe was good. Uh, Arvidsson was good. Your Dowdy, Phil Deneau, you mentioned. Who are you watching? So if there's kind of a player here in this series that you want to keep your eyes on for the Kings that you think would be the most effective in this series. Who do you think it would be? Uh, well, Drew Doughty, he missed the whole series last year. And uh, so it was kind of surprising. The Kings were able to get to seven games without him. And, um, you know, the Kings are going to look to use him against McDavid a lot. Um, you know, it's never an easy matchup for any defenseman against him. But last year, they didn't really have a true number one. And um, they're going to be looking to match his pairing with Mikey Anderson up against that. And uh, Anderson is another guy to watch because in the last two games they played against each other. uh, Well, Anderson got uh, hit by McDavid and uh, a lot of Kings fans were upset that it wasn't more than just a two minute penalty. I didn't think it was more than a two minute penalty, but they, uh, they were not happy. And um, yeah, that's going to be a key matchup. Anderson's been uh, really developing as like a young defensive defenseman. And um, that's going to be a key pairing to go against like the high powered McDavid line and uh yeah definitely on the penalty kill as well when when they're on the power on the- yeah they definitely missed uh Mikey Anderson when he was not in the lineup against the Oilers uh that that mattered is he playing do you know is he back in for game yeah one for he, he he got back in the lineup uh the last two games of the season so okay. he should be good to go so that's good news for them. Uh, what's the status on Fiala? Do you know? Is is anybody know if he's in for game one yet? Uh, he hasn't been skating as far as I know. So I haven't really heard much. But yeah, he he um, he missed the last two Oilers games. He did play in between the two games. And then once the Kings clinched, they shut him down, it seemed like. Mm. So maybe he'll be back, but I'm not sure yet. Well, he was pretty potent against the Oilers in their first couple of games. He was one of those guys that was uh, helpful when the Kings beat the Oilers uh, early in the season. Colton, what about you? Who are you watching? I mean, we all know McDavid, Dreisaitl, uh, Nugent Hopkins, like you said, has had a career year. Hyman's had a career year. Uh, Evander Kane scored more goals than anybody in the playoffs last year. Like, who are you watching particularly? Uh, maybe even outside of those names. Is there somebody that you're kind of keeping an eye on for this series? So I think one guy that I'm kind of excited to watch just because I think he plays a playoff style and he's not a guy that maybe would have the biggest impact on the series, but I'd like to see what Clint Costner can do. Just he's kind of that guy that can run around, throw his body around, but also at times this year has shown a bit of a goal scoring ability as well. So he's somebody that I'm really excited to watch. And then the other guy that you brought up is Evander Kane. He obviously had a lot of injuries this season, uh, just had a hard time staying healthy and wasn't nearly as productive as he was last year. But we've seen in the playoffs last year just how valuable he can be. I think he was scoring at nearly a goal per game pace. So he's just been since they picked him up, such a huge addition. So if he can stay healthy, I think he's a guy that can really kind of determine how this series goes one way or the other. So between him and Costin, I think they just give the Oilers that much needed physicality, but also some offensive punch as well. Yeah, I do like Evander Kane's uh, chances of kind of exploding here. He was when he came back, it looked like he he wasn't always effective, but when he did it did score, he kind of exploded. He had a hat trick and then he had a couple and so he would do it in bunches. So if he can get hot for the Oilers in the playoffs, that's good news for them because it's just I mean, their bottom six, everybody had 10 goals, right? Like, so they've got really well-rounded offense in that regard. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, what do you think McDavid and Dreisen are going to do? I mean, they were monsters in the, se- the series last year. Do you think they have the same sort of impact? Can they repeat that sort of performance? Yeah. I mean, I think at this point, it's kind of just, no, well, not kind of, it's just what's expected. And I think even from the Kings standpoint, I think 
the message has got to be like, you know, they're going to put up some points, shut them down as much as you can. And not so much that, but just limit everyone else. I think as long as you can kind of keep it between those two, then it's shown in past years before last season that if you just let those two score and are able to shut down the rest, they are a beatable team. And obviously they have a rookie goaltender and Stuart Skinner as well. So if they're able to maybe get to him and just allow and just shut everyone else down, but those two, uh, they could be okay. But I think dry settle, especially has really been coming on here the last couple months. I think he was still sort of battling maybe a bit of an injury from last year's playoffs early in the season. And it seems like lately he's just been on a tear and he's a guy that seems to elevate his game even higher in the playoffs. So it's going to be a tough task for the Kings, but at the same time, I think that is kind of the mindset is to really focus on shutting everyone else down. Yeah. Considering what he did when he was hurt last year yeah. in the playoffs and how he played through that, it'd be very interesting to see what he can do when he's mostly healthy. We we yeah. know these guys are never all the way healthy, but uh, Nick switching gears a little bit. You had did mention that you thought maybe the Kings needed to sort of break out of their defensive structure to have some success here. If we're talking about keys to victory for the Kings in this series, is that it for you? Is that the kind of what you think is going to do it? Or is there another kind of secret weapon that maybe the Kings have to employ or use or, a strategy that they need to take when it comes to beating the Oilers here. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I think they're still going to stick with that defensive structure. I bet uh, the coach is pretty happy with how they somewhat limited the Oilers in the last two games. Um, but as for like a key, I think um, getting scoring from like the third and fourth lines is going to be better because you're never going to outscore the, the Oilers top lines with what the Kings have, but just, I think rolling all four lines, getting production from guys like, Blake Lazat, and if he's playing, if he all is healthy and playing on that third line, he's definitely going to have to make an impact because the Kings are probably going to try and play as much as you can. Obviously, it's not going to be possible to slow down McDavid and dry saddles lines, but they're probably going to try and uh, match up Deneau with McDavid and then Kopitar with dry saddles line, I, I would imagine. And so getting production from the bottom six lines or bottom six forwards would be a, a key to how they can uh, potentially compete in this series. Yeah, the Oilers do like to rely on that top six, which is potent, maybe the best in the NHL. Um, but if they've had a pretty well-rounded bottom six, but if the Kings can shut that bottom six down and really limit, like Colton said, and, and you just said, limit that top six to uh, fewer points than maybe they've gotten in the past, it could be really uh, helpful for the Kings. What about you, Colton? Is there kind of a strategy that you think, is it just, find a way to keep scoring at the pace that you're scoring, or is there something else here that you're looking for with the, with the Oilers success here? Oh, hang on, Colton. You're on mute there, buddy. There we go. That's all right. <laughs> I think it's more of a uh, defensive kind of scheme that they're going to bring in this one. I think we kind of seen it throughout the season. Like the Kings, you kind of mentioned it earlier, Jim, have two really good shutdown centermen in Kopitar and Deneau. So it's tough for the Oilers to be able to run up the score like they have against so many teams. So I think kind of being able to really lock things down defensively and possibly maybe see a series where it is those two, one, three, two kind of lower scoring games. So I think it's not going to be as much of just um, a running gun type series as opposed to really kind of systematic play. I, I think obviously the Kings with McCollum behind the bench are going to play like Nick had alluded to kind of that one, three, one system where they hold back a bit and maybe just wait for some mistakes. So I, I think it's going to be a lot lower scoring and the Oilers are going to put a lot of emphasis on strong defensive play. I'll stick with you, Colton, for this next one. Is there something you're worried about if we're talking about weaknesses for the Oilers? I mean, going into the trade deadline, it was their defense. It might still be their goaltending, even though Stuart Skinner has played pretty well. We don't know what to expect from Jack Campbell. He's not had a good season. But is there something that you're kind of worried about with the Oilers or a weakness that you see here that maybe the Kings can exploit or that the Oilers need to make sure they limit so that this doesn't get away from them? So I think what worries me is that last year, we kind of thought the Oilers were clear favorites and heading into that first round series against the Kings. And they ended up, they were trailing three, two, and they got by, but it wasn't easy at all. And if anything, the Kings are a stronger team this year. Granted, so are the Oilers, but I just, the series by no means is going to be a cakewalk. And then you said it and it's goaltending with Stuart Skinner. And obviously he's been, had a really strong rookie year. He's been probably had his best play of the season over his past four or five starts here. But again, he's never played in the NHL playoffs before. So just what kind of, what does that extra pressure do to him? He, he's a guy to me that seems pretty calm, cool and collective. So I think he should be fine, but until he proves it, it is a bit of a question mark and it is a little worrisome. Like you said, knowing that you can't really switch to Campbell given what he's given you so far this year. 
Yeah, I mean, I suppose you can, but you don't know what you're going to get, yeah, right? Like, it's going to be one of those things where you're not you don't really want, sure. You don't want to. Well, he could do great, and he could yeah. be a total disaster. So it's yeah. really, really hard to know. Nick, what about you? I mean, is there something here that you're kind of thinking, man, if the Oilers can take advantage of this, they probably will. Is there something that you see in the Kings, the way they play, or how they might be affected in the series of weakness or something that you're worried about? Surprisingly, the answer, I'm not that worried about the goaltending, even though it's been a concern all season. Uh, Corpus Salo has been really solid since he got to the Kings, and I think that's who they're going to go with. They haven't officially announced like who's going to be the starter, but I'm more worried about the penalty kill. Even though they did a good job against the Oilers' power play, um, the Oilers did find uh, two power play goals in the last game and that they played, and um, you know that that power play is historically good. So it just if if the Kings aren't staying disciplined, taking like they took four uh, penalties in the last meeting, and um, if they just keep giving them power plays, it's just not going to be a recipe for success for them. Yeah, I, I would assume it's not limited to LA in that regard. If yeah. if they're if anybody's given the Oilers power plays, they're in trouble. I mean, there's not been a better power play, uh, you know, at all. Like the Oilers yeah. broke the record for it, right? So it's it's just that dangerous that you don't want to give them the chances. I was going to ask you about the goaltending, and like you said, we don't know who's going to start. Do you think that's a positive or a negative? Like the positive here is that the Kings can have two potential starters that they can go with, where the Oilers probably don't. But the negative might be that you don't have a legit starter so much and a guy that you're like, yeah, this is our guy. Uh, he's played so well that we know he's our guy. Like, what are you thinking when it comes to that? Um, I mean, I think you always feel more comfortable if you have a number one you can rely on. But um, like I said, Corpus Salo has really impressed me. I wasn't so, so uh, excited about the trade when they made it, but he's been really good this whole season. He, he has a track record of, playing pretty well in the playoffs in the past. And um, I think they're definitely going to give him the net for at least the first game. And, um, you know, Phoenix Copley, he's, he's played well this year, but he's a journeyman goalie. And um, he like, he, he's played well enough where if Corpus Allo doesn't do well, they can turn to him. But I think, uh, yeah, they, they'll go to Corpus Allo. And, um, you know, he's, he's been good enough to, to have some confidence. Uh, he's gotten shut out. Uh, shut out his first uh his first shutout with the team on monday so no that that'll work. be that'll be good i mean it's tough to know right if the oilers have the ability to explode on somebody and if you do mm -hmm. that and then want to go to the other guy and they explode again i mean what do you do right like it's yeah. just the you just sort of have to limit it the best you can and those two have played really well this season uh colton i'll come back to you i'm gonna ask you each for a bold prediction and a not so bold prediction so the bold prediction is basically something that you might expect that nobody else is really thinking about that you're kind of looking forward going, you know what? I think this will probably happen and no one's really talking about it. And then the not so bold prediction is just sort of an obvious something that you're thinking. Yeah. Everybody knows this is probably going to happen, but I'll go there anyway. And I'll make that prediction. So what would your bold prediction and your not so bold prediction for the Oilers be? So my bold prediction will actually be um, on uh, Evan Bouchard. And I think this is a guy that, struggled i'll say throughout the majority of the 22 23 season he obviously ended up with i think right on 40 points but really just kind of especially early in the year me and you had talked about it jim just couldn't seem to gain any type of confidence he wasn't putting up his points early on and defensively was really uh a bit of a train wreck i think he just struggled to do everything defensively and he just wasn't good in that regard and then we had said when they traded tyson berry that kind of opened the door for him to really realize he was the guy offensively and is given that time on the power play now and we kind of see him throughout the season and even after they got traded for Ekholm as well that his confidence really kind of seemed to pick up so I think he's a guy in the playoffs that I think could have a huge playoff run for them and kind of a guy that can really endear himself to Oilers fans here and obviously um, would help him out on a future contract as well um, and then as for my not so bold prediction I just think that we're just going to see McDavid and Drysaddle elevate their games to extreme heights even Nugent Hopkins I think just having three guys uh, with 100 points in a regular season. Obviously, it's the first time it's happened since uh, the Penguins did so, I believe, in like the early 90s. So I think that you're just going to see some big series from these guys. Like I said, I don't think the games will be super high scoring, but I just think that those three, and especially McDavid and Drysaddle, are just going to put on some outstanding performances. It's amazing how history has sort of repeated itself with Evan Bouchard, right? Like we talked last year about how we played with Duncan Keith and it just sort of elevated his game and he became a new defenseman. And the moment Matthias Ekholm arrived and they put those two together, same thing. Like Evan Bouchard has been fantastic since Ekholm's been 
there he's been really confident. He's limited some of those mistakes, the train wrecks that you were talking about. He's kind of cut those down and he's like a point of game player since the trade deadline. Like it's been really, really good. So I don't even know if that's so much of a bold prediction anymore. He's played so well since the deadline. That might be the case. Um, What about you, Nick? Is there something that you would say, yeah, this is my bold prediction. Nobody's really expecting this. And then something that's kind of more obvious for the Kings. Bold prediction that I talked about how they definitely need scoring from the bottom six. And I think a guy to look at is Arthur Kaliev. You know, he's a young player. He's got a really good shot. He got 13 goals this year. And um, he's, he's definitely a guy who like they can look towards on the bottom six to get some goals. And then uh, it's not so much of a bold prediction considering what we talked about with how defensive the games were between the two teams, but I think that um, this is going to be a lower scoring series than people think, Um, you know, you just look at the Oilers, how many goals they scored this season and the Kings scored a fair amount and gave up a fair amount. But I just think the Kings are are still going to try and play really defensive in this series. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how they have to play to try and win this series. So it's going to be maybe lower scoring than everyone thinks. No, that's fair for sure. Uh, okay. So let's, the three of us will do this. So uh, Colton, I'll start with you, Nick, I'll go with you and then I'll go last. If you have to pick an MVP for this series and you can pick from your own team, or you can pick from the other team. When we did the Toronto Tampa Bay one, I think somebody actually picked the other team's player. You can do whatever you want here, but who would be the MVP of this series for you? Colton, I'll start with you. I was going to say, can we have one each way, depending on how it goes? If you've got it, I'll give you a minute to do this. So go for it. Yeah. So I think if it's, if it's Edmonton, I I think it's Leon Dreisaitl. And obviously I know a lot of people will be saying, how's it not McDavid, but I just think as crazy as it is, he seems to almost be the better playoff performer of the two. And I know that sounds insane with how good McDavid was last year, obviously had the big overtime series clincher against the Flames, but especially a healthy dry settle. I think he's a guy that can just really dominate games in the postseason. He's so big, so strong. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what he can do when he's really healthy. And then if the Kings are going to win, I do think it's going to be Corpus Allo. I think that was a, a sneaky pickup by them to kind of boost their goaltending position. And like uh, Nick said, since he's been there, he's looked quite good. So I'll go with those two from each team. Sure. That's fair. I think those are good picks. Uh, Nick, you can do the same. You can pick just LA. You can pick both teams, whatever you like. So where would you go? Well, it's hard not to go with Connor McDavid on the Oilers. Um, I noticed last year when the Kings got up three, two, he got 24 minutes in game six and 27 minutes in game seven, just absurd numbers for a forward in a regulation game. So obviously if things get down to those uh, critical games, he's going to play more and more. But uh, for the Kings, I'm going to go with Anze Kopitar. Um, you know, he's still really solid defensively, and he's he had a really good offensive year as well. So they're going to rely on him both ways and, um, you know, try and take advantage of when he's on the ice against maybe some weaker defensive uh, lines against the Oilers. No, I like both of those picks too. I'm going to go a little bit off the board. I'm going to take defensemen in both situations here. I think Matias Ekholm is a player that we're going to want to watch. I don't necessarily know that he's going to be like a high point producer or anything like that, but I think where the Oilers are going to succeed here, if they succeed is, is staying structured and not just relying on their offense, but playing a really sound defensive game against the Kings as well. And you need Ekholm playing the way he's played since he arrived for them to do that. So if he can do that, I don't think you're going to, you won't hear his name a ton. I mean, people have talked about him a lot since he got there, but if he's really kind of on and he's playing the way he's played, I think he's going to be somebody that's really key for the Oilers to keep those games within reason and stay structured and stay smart. Uh, I like Doughty in LA just because he did not play last year uh, in the playoffs against the Oilers. I think having him back will just be so one of a motivational boost. I think if there's anybody that's going to have some success on the blue line against dry settle McDavid, it's probably going to be Doughty like anybody. He's been burned a couple of times by those two guys, but that doesn't mean that he's not really a really top notch defenseman still. So I think if he has a good series, that's going to be really huge for the Kings. So those are the guys that I would probably pick as my MVPs. Golden, I'll come back to you. Uh, let's start. Let's predict a winner here. So if you want to say who you think is going to take the series and in how many games, I'll start with you. So, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm going to go with the Oilers, um, but I do think it's going to be a close series. And I, I, I think a lot of people think that this year. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a closely contested one, but that said, I'll take the Oilers in six games. Nope. Fair. Uh, I think it's going to be a close series too. Nick, what about you? 
so a few weeks ago, I think I might have picked the Kings because they were really rolling. They were like uh, had the best point percentage from February to mid March, and uh, they've fallen off with Fiala being injured. So I think I have to go with the Oilers in six games. Um, I don't know if the Kings can really get it together against this hot team coming into the playoffs like the Oilers. Yeah, the, the, it, it's going to be interesting because there's two teams like the Oilers were the hottest teams since the deadline and they're coming in on a roll and the Kings have sort of played. I don't know if it's been 500, but they've been sort of up and down since then. Uh, not like they were heading into this when they were at, at a point almost competing for the Pacific Division title. Mm-hmm. So it's two different teams coming in and their storylines are different. I don't know that that necessarily means that we should write the Kings off or anything like that. I'm going to pick the Oilers in 6-2. Uh, I also think that these games are going to be pretty close. I do think there's probably the potential for one team to blow out another here. And if I'm leaning one way, it's probably the Oilers winning like a five, one game or something like that. But I do think it'll be a six game series. Uh, I don't know if it'll go seven, but I do. I'm picking the Oilers as well. I just think they're too, too on fire going into the playoffs right now. I, I can't remember a time they've played better hockey. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to watch. Colton, Nick, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys uh, doing this rundown of the first round uh, preview. If either one of your teams get out of the first round, we'll probably have you back to cover the next round as well. Uh, for everybody else watching and listening here, thank you very much. Check out the other videos on the YouTube channel, on social media, share these with other people. Uh, give us a five-star rating and comment down what you think and predict the series is going to look like. Is it the Oilers? Is it the Kings? How many games? Put it in the comment section and let us know. And check out both of these writers on the hotcreators.com. We'd appreciate it. Until next time, thanks everybody.